exactly five years ago today, at this very hour, around two o'clock, I was on my hands and knees, starting to push my daughter, Eula, into the world. She came out of my body, and our eyes met, and we shared our first hello. Happy birthday, sweetie. Aww. My birth empowered me, but this strong body broke down afterwards. Incontinence, thyroid disease, pelvic floor dysfunction, and hormonal imbalance. At first I was shocked. I had no idea these things could happen. And then overcome with grief. Why me? Why any woman? And then a huge anger amplified in me. I was mad mostly at men. How was this the evolutionary deal? Women's bodies suffer at the hands of men and then suffer bringing the next generation in, and then society doesn't care for us, and we're all okay with this? Add a serious dose of sleep deprivation, and I became a tornado. I threw heavy rocks at trees. I banged on the bed and growled at my gentle husband. I came this close to crashing my car into a 20-foot ditch. I once rooted through the trash and grabbed my urine-soaked pads, took a Sharpie marker and wrote, you do not pay attention on them, and then hung them like an artwork on the wall just to make my husband sorry. So clearly things were rough. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, I sang songs and giggled with my daughter. We tasted carrots and blackberries and oud at the flavor. We slept cheek to cheek. My rage was linked to postpartum, but it was also just straight up female rage, and that's what I want to talk about today. Female rage is up on the national stage. It is a wildfire burning here and across the world, but it is not new. My rage was mine. It was also my mother's. It was my grandmother's. It was the women before me related by blood or not. It was all the women of all time. My rage was theirs, their rage was mine. Because I'm a storyteller, I wrote a memoir about this experience, and I called it Body Full of Stars, to focus on the possibility in rage, not only the hardship. People warned me that this might trigger some women. <laughs> and so it did. One of my late grandmother's only living friends, a woman named Jane in her mid-80s, reached out to my mother via email. She'd read an interview with me, but not my book. And this is what she said. Whatever happened to suck it up, grow up, and move on? My first thought was, wow, that is the language of the patriarchy. And then my stomach sank. I was sad not for me, but for her, for women who believe that. I'm still surprised that shame didn't wash over me. She was judging me. She was doing that unproductive thing women do to one another, where they wonder, who does she think she is? In that moment, I became deeply curious about why a woman would respond that way. Why would she? And without knowing it, Jane invited me into this question. She inspired me to ask, what is true resilience for a woman in our era? It cannot be dealing with it in stoic silence. We cannot afford that anymore. History shows that silence does not lead to change. And medicine documents that unexpressed anger in the body often leads to disease. And yet, generally, it has not been safe for women of any background to share that they, too, experience the normal human emotion of anger. So what exactly does an angry woman risk? At best, she's told she's getting a little out of hand. At worst, she faces abuse, isolation, abandonment, blacklisting, even death. My privilege granted me the safety to share my story. I am a white, straight, middle-class American. 
And unlike Jane, I was born into a generation and a place where confessing my anger is largely valued by my peers. For me, the risk was small. For many, the risk is huge, and they harness their outrage anyway. They are high school students who take on the gun lobby. They are mothers who try to protect their black children from police brutality. They are girls who fight for an education in countries where their voices do not count. These women, and others like them, lead the way. Later on in her email, Jane wrote, thankfully, many women are acting like adults, implying that I'm not. For me, the best way to be an adult is to focus on participating in making female rage part of the daily conversation. Let us talk about it so candidly, so thoroughly, so frequently that we extend the sphere of safety out for those women who do not have it yet. Because for many women, silence is still required for survival. This is about creating a lush and green ground cover for everyone. So what is resilience in our era? There are many ways to be a resilient woman, but in a time where technology and overwork and speed have disembodied us, I believe we have to come back to the body. I have learned to use my menstrual cycle as a tool for releasing my anger. Now, if you are out there right now thinking, oh geez, here we go, and you are tuning me out, please stick with me. This is what I call female resilience. And that term is not to perpetuate the gender binary, but to make known that if you live inside a biologically female body, you have an exquisitely engineered system for processing emotions. Did you know that? During every cycle and the hormonal gateways of childbirth and menopause, our emotions show up, they move through us. It just happens. This is the gift of the female body. But we modern females are largely disconnected from this practice. Our ancestral females everywhere practiced some version of this truth. But it is overlooked and underutilized now because our male-dominated world swept that knowledge away ages ago. I do love men, by the way. It swept that knowledge away, which is why seventh graders hide their tampons. It's why grown men and grown women cannot publicly say the word period without squirming. And it's why someone like Jane would not have had access to that kind of information in the first place. So here's a condensed version of what this looks like. If you no longer bleed, or you've never bled but you identify as a woman, you can use the moon cycle and it works. So in the premenstrual week, all the imbalances in your life come into focus. You get very honest, very honest. <laughs> this is the time to explore your rage in private. Stomp, punch, yell, scream. Let it move into you and through you and out of you. When you start to bleed, it's time to nourish yourself. Take you know, self-care. Um, release. Let things go. Look, I know we can all do anything while bleeding, but if you take an hour, a few hours, a few days during this time to fill that tank, that stored energy will do wonders for you. The weeks before and during ovulation are for doing. You become electric. This is the time to move that rage into the external world with action and resolution. Have those hard conversations with yourself and with others. And then, find your pleasure. Create something. The female body is a creator of businesses, of children, of gardens, of computer codes, of everything. If we are creating, we are less likely to misdirect our rage. Now, I do realize that life does not always line up this way. But this is a well-worn blueprint, and it works. One female in tune with this rhythm creates a ripple effect way beyond herself. One female. 
So I fail and succeed at this all the time. But trying to become body fluent has altered my life. And I want to pass that on. When my daughter gets irritated, I try to say, it's okay to be angry, sweetie. Can I help you find a safe place to put that anger? I'm learning this alongside her. We are all learning this together. How to stop saying, who does she think she is? But to say instead, I'm here with you. And it's okay. It's okay to be angry is a revolution for many of us. Jane, it's okay you got angry. Thank you for stirring my pot. I want to respectfully disagree that repressing emotions is resilience. That no longer feels sustainable. I'm not going to just deal. I'm going to feel. I want to imagine a world in which females are taught by other females to become experts at feeling, processing, and releasing through the body. Imagine that outcome. Imagine it. It sounds soft. It is. It is also very purposeful. It is a new feminism of the body. It is masterful. And the time has come. Thank you.